Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Layoffs at CNN officially commence. Some are calling them layoffs, some are calling them mass layoffs. Honestly, call them what you wanna. The fact here is, CNN new CEO Chris Litch is cleaning house. He said that difficult decisions had to be made and that it was most likely going to be uncomfortable. Well, folks, that's exactly what's going on. As CNN shuts down an entire division and sacks their online CNN politics editor at large, Chris Saliza. Another one bites the dust, folks. Let's talk about the continued slow march towards the end of woke media. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, take a look at this piece right over here from the Daily. Daily Mail. CNN fires Chris Saliza and correspondents Allison Kosick, Alex Field, host Martin Savage, and VP of Northeast News, Mary Ann Fox. And on top of that, scraps HLN's live programming in its latest round of layoffs. The latest round of layoffs at CNN has hit some of the network's biggest names. Political analyst Chris Saliza, 46, who has been covering national politics, the White House, and Congress for the cable giant since 2017, after coming over to the network from the Washington Post was among those who were let go this week, Variety reported. Now, for those of you guys who aren't aware, this is Chris Saliza, CNN politics reporter and editor at large. Chris is no small fry. Chris Saliza is essentially one of the bosses of CNN's online presence, their online content and article writing under CNN politics. This is big news because the focus has been on all the primetime shows, the Jake Tappers, the Anderson Coopers, the Jim Acostas of the world, who's next on the chopping block, but their online presence is just as significant and some would say possibly even more significant. Chris Saliza is the editor at large for CNN politics, meaning the contents of articles published have to go through him, at least a good chunk of them. And what we can't just conveniently ignore or look over is that most if not all of the most destructive, divisive, fake news that CNN has published and promoted comes from their online division. All of the phony reports and phony fake news gets published on the website first, and then you have the CNN actors like Don Lemonhead, Jake Tapper, and the rest of these clowns basically parroting what the articles wrote earlier in the morning. And this Chris Saliza guy, I mean, this guy is a phony. He's a fraud. He'll publish articles every now and then. Lefties are actually celebrating the firing of Chris Saliza because they view him as a coward who takes both sidism stances. But really, I'll tell you firsthand my experience with listening to Chris Saliza report and speak. The whole both sides thing is almost like a shtick. He uses it almost like a distraction or a cover. Every now and then he'll write an article which portrays almost like a semblance of non-bias or fair reporting, but it's all fake. It's the same kind of grift, the same kind of shtick that Jake Tapper and Anderson Cooper run. Chris Saliza has been at the network since 2017. That's when Donald Trump was inaugurated. And he has been a boss, a major editor for CNN's online division. All of the fake news, all of the phony, garbage hit pieces that CNN has published, which trended on Twitter and which influenced people's views and influenced the election, all happened under this guy's watch. So while we may have overlooked an individual like Chris Saliza, his firing may actually take priority over individuals like Jake Tapper and others. He might even be the head of fake news at CNN. I mean, the online CNN division was really the premier anti-Trump division, which generated them billions of dollars during the Trump years, otherwise known as the Trump bump. It wasn't really in the network views and the Nielsen ratings. The money that CNN was making during the Trump days was with online CNN subscriptions. And this right here, folks, it signals that CNN is moving in a different direction. It's big, big news, and when you look at the whole picture, it's looking like a major overhaul. The network has absolutely destroyed its reputation, and it seems like they're in a financial freefall. And this is causing the desperation that we're seeing amid these layoffs. Not only did Chris Kaliza and other top CNN employees get fired, but they're also totally scrapping H&L programming moving forward. Now, somebody has to educate me on what H&L is. Honestly, I had no idea that it even existed. But I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that clearly CNN is desperate to slash an entire news network or news division as they try to stop the woke ship from sinking. And that's really what it is. CNN got woke and went broke. CNN made their identity pushing fake news and attacking Donald Trump, and they became the latest victims of the Trump curse. But moving on, interestingly enough, CNN isn't the only one learning the hard way, getting woke and going broke. 
Actually, this segment of the video is a little bit of a retraction or a clarification. I released a video about four days ago about Disney going broke, where Disney Insider was speculating that the firing of Bob Chapek was possibly due to his refusal to cave in to the woke mob. A little bit of an interesting take, I mean, we obviously declared it speculation, but now it seems as though Bob Chapek might have actually been fired because he was too woke, and they're bringing back in the earlier Bob, Bob Iger, who just said this. Here's a virtual question. Many cast members had wished that Disney stayed out of politics. Will Disney stay out of making political statements? You know, I think uh, there's a misperception here about what politics is. And I think that some of the subjects that have proven to be controversial as it relates to Disney have been branded political, and I don't necessarily believe they are. I don't think when you are telling stories and attempting to be a good citizen of the world that that's political, just not how I view it. Do I like the company being embroiled in controversy? Of course not. It can be distracting and it can have a negative impact on the company. And to the extent that I can work to kind of quiet things down, I'm going to do that. But I think it's, it's important to put in perspective what some of these subjects are and not just simply brand them political. No. Um, I, 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 um, I have to get up to speed on that completely. Obviously, I followed the news. That development occurred after I left the company. I was sorry to see us um, uh, dragged into that battle. Um, and I have no idea I exactly what its ramifications are in terms of um, the business itself. Um, what I can say is the state of Florida has been important to us for a long time, and we have been very important to the state of Florida. That is something I'm extremely mindful of and will articulate if I get the chance, but I don't have the details at all yet about what the ramifications are of the decision that was made by the state of Florida and whether we intend to do anything about it. Now that wasn't a total condemnation of the woke cultural BS, but it certainly was a step back, essentially stating publicly that Disney is going to move away from pushing these sensitive, controversial cultural issues or cultural topics. That to me seems like a win in the culture war. What it seems to me is that these woke companies are going broke and they're scrambling as they get desperate. As the economy takes a turn for the worst, all of a sudden, they're realizing being woke isn't exactly profitable it's kind of running their businesses into the ground. It may be possible to be woke when governments are printing trillions upon trillions of dollars and there's endless money being invested into the markets and capital being raised. But when you're forced to come back down to reality, this whole woke business model is clearly not sustainable. And it seems as though CNN is learning the hard way. Disney also seems to be learning the hard way. And we might be near the end, near the end of this woke media era. Of course, we'll have to see. But at least it's a step in the right direction. CNN and politics editor at large Chris Saliza is officially fired and now we're learning that even Disney is possibly taking a step back away from the woke cultural nonsense that's the video folks hopefully you enjoyed it if you did make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel I'm gonna get out of here I gotta record one more video for the night I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one